now review the operating principle of the Foxborough E13 electronic force balance transmitter. Locate the capsule 1. The explanation will proceed from the capsule around the schematic in a clockwise direction. An increase in pressure on the high side of the capsule marked H will transfer a force through the C flexor 2 to the bottom of the force bar 3. The force bar will move in the direction shown by arrow F1 at the bottom of the force bar 3. The force bar 3 will pivot about the diaphragm seal 4. The top of the force bar 3 will exert a force on the vector mechanism 5 in the direction shown by arrow F2. This will cause the lever mechanism 11 to pivot at point 6. which in turn causes the ferrite disc, 12, to move in the direction shown by arrow F4. The ferrite disc, 12, is part of a differential transformer, 7, which serves as a detector. The position change of the ferrite disc changes the output of the differential transformer. which is fed to the oscillator amplifier section 8. The oscillator output is rectified to DC and becomes the 10 to 50 or 4 to 20 milliamp transmitter output signal. The DC output is fed to the receivers in the loop and also to the feedback motor, 9. The feedback motor, 9, exerts a force on the lever system in opposition to that produced at the diaphragm capsule, 1. Ten to fifty, or four to twenty milliamperes through the force motion, 9, will balance the force across the capsule within the calibrated range of the transmitter. The total change in position for the detector armature between minimum and maximum output signal is approximately three ten thousandths of an inch. The Foxborough 613 is an earlier model than the E13. Many are still in service. We will discuss it briefly. This is a component diagram of the model 613. An increase in pressure on the high side of the diaphragm capsule will move the bottom of the force bar in the direction shown by the arrow at H. The force bar will pivot about the diaphragm seal. This will cause the link AB at the top to move to the left. The range rod will pivot about point C.
causing the armature to move in the direction of the arrow. This will increase the inductive coupling. and increase the secondary voltage output of the detector. This will increase the oscillator amplifier output. Which is fed as DC current through the feedback force coil and the load. The force developed by 10 to 50 milliamperes DC through the feedback motor opposes the force across the capsule. The forces will balance within the range of the transmitter. Here we have the static alignment screw. The overrange adjustment. the span adjustment screw, and the zero adjustment screw. The diaphragm seal seals the process within the meter body and serves as a pivot point for the force bar. In general, the operating principle and wiring hookup of the 613 shown here is the same as the E13. We can see that the amplifier and terminal strips are different. There are no span links. The zero adjustment is in practically the same place. This is a component diagram of the 613. See if you can mentally identify the items with the colored numbers. Check your answers. Now work exercise number 10 in your workbook. The Foxborough E11 series are force balance type electronic gauge pressure transmitters. The top works and principle of operation are identical to the E13 for differential pressure. The basic difference is in the measuring element. This is a cutaway view of the measuring capsules. Table 1 shows the various spans, ranges, maximum overrange, and required elements for particular conditions. The five capsules, A through E, are interchangeable for the 11 GM. From the table, it is evident that overlapping is provided between the spans and ranges. Suppose we desire to measure 150 pounds steam, and we wish to provide a range of 100 to 200 PSIG. The span for the range 100 to 200 PSIG is 100 PSIG. Look at capsule B in table 1. The range limits are minus 15 to 350 PSIG. This is within our 100 to 200 PSIG range.
Look at the span limits for capsule B. They are from 20 to 200 PSIG. This is within our required span of 100 PSIG. Capsule B will be suitable. Now let's have a look at capsule C. The range limits are minus 15 to 750 PSIG. The span limits for capsule C are 40 to 400 PSIG. Both range and span limits are within our 100 to 200 PSIG range. Therefore, either capsule B or C could be used. Overrange protection has to be considered when making the capsule selection. Two elements, M and H, for the E11GH are listed. These elements are the C-type Borden tube and are interchangeable. This is a view of the 11GH showing the process pressure connection. The C-tube and flexure connection to the bottom of the force bar are visible here. This is a component diagram of the E11GM. It is a force balance transmitter and will convert gauge pressure to 10 to 50 or 4 to 20 milliamps DC. Locate the diaphragm seal. Above this seal, the schematic is identical to the E13 for differential pressure. The pressure being measured enters through the pressure connection and is applied to the capsule. The capsule is connected to the bottom of the force bar with the flexure. The flexures are shown attached to the capsule. The pressure exerts a force on the capsule. Causing the force bar to pivot about the diaphragm seal. This causes a movement of the detector armature. Which causes a change in current flow in the detector secondary winding. This current is converted to DC and fed through the feedback coil. When a force equal to that applied to the capsule is achieved, the lever system is in balance. Like the E13, the proper link arrangement must be selected for a given span. Note that the diagram for either the low, medium, or high spans is shown directly to the left of the links. Closely observe the diagram in the center marked medium. Then look at the actual link connections to the right. These links are connected for the medium span. As these are. Changing the links changes the net ampere turns of the force motor coil. The heavy lines represent the links. Note that one link is in the oscillator section. 
The link wiring shown here is for the medium spans. Follow the circuit from 2 to 1. To 3 to 5. To 4 to 6. The current flows one way through the 131 ohm coil. And the opposite way through the 42 ohm coil. The net force is 131 minus 42, which equals 89 ohms. Only the 42 ohm coil is used for the low spans, while the full force of 131 plus 42 ohms is used for the high spans. Now work exercise number 11 in your workbook.